Real quick, we got a uh, super chat from Sean. Thank you, Sean. Um, does it matter in terms of performance if you instantiate a bunch of objects in a wake versus a start? Um, no. Like, it, it, as far as both go, um, all awakes happen, then all starts happen, and that happens pretty much at the beginning of your application. So there's as much of a performance cost as there is to instantiate that many objects. Not really the, um, the, the location that matters. I will say, though, so in order of precedence, your ideal scenario is to have stuff pre-instantiated in, um, in the hierarchy. So you don't have to actually go and go through an instantiation step. Uh, preferably as well, I'd say look into this if you're worried. Hierarchies can cause issues with moving objects. People don't really think about it, but Unity does an event system that goes up and down for the objects in the hierarchy. So if you have a load of child objects, it may look neater in a lot of cases to put a folder and put all of your uh, bullets under it. Uh, I know I like doing that myself, but it is worth noting that when objects move, they um, dispatch events to say where they are relative to their parents and children. So wherever possible, it's actually better from memory management perspective um, not to have objects nested deep into hierarchies of neat folders, especially if they're runtime objects where you're not going to be looking at the hierarchy anyway. Um, as for actually instantiating the objects, I mean, if you have to instantiate stuff, you have to instantiate stuff. Preferably do it um, pool-wise, instantiate and turn off renderers and work with them when you need to by, by reactivating them. But as for when, your start frame is going to be your start frame. It doesn't matter which awake or start you use. It's just going to be the beginning of your application. Just try to avoid iterating and instantiating midway through a running application because you will get hitches. Your application will do that really small judder that makes it look like it's, you know, <laughs> too, too badly performing or something. <laughs> you know, one thing I like to do to address that, because I also like to nest everything, um, I like to keep everything real neat, um, is I will put a blank game object um, that I make editor only, and I'll just put like a bunch of lines uh, to kind of like treat it like a separator, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that that I really like. Also, I was trying to get an affiliate link. I like to use the tools like, uh, what is that, Rainbow Hierarchy Pro or Hierarchy Pro? Yeah, I was going to say, I used to do the same thing with the dots. Actually, it I don't, I don't be like my... that. No, go ahead, sorry. I, was gonna say, I, used to do, I used to do the same thing. Like, you'll see a lot of programmers will do that in Unity. Mm -hmm. They will have some, they'll either use an asterisk or a dash, and they Dashes. will make separate aligners between objects. Um, it looks nice, but it's basically creating objects for no other purpose than to make you feel better about the way it looks. Uh, and, and unlike code, where you can kind of get away with having slightly more verbose when it's not going to cost you, I try to avoid doing that where possible. Mm. Um, I have to fight my instinct for really clean and, and structurally nice things when it comes to memory management. It's just going to be a trade-off you'll have to do when you start scaling up the larger projects. So, yeah, I do the same thing as you. I've switched over to using something like Rainbow Hierarchy because it'll let you highlight and define separations That'll only exist in the editor and won't carry over in terms of memory to your game. There is a link uh, in the description of this video. Um, I do have like a section called, I think it's called assets that I love or something like that. And you can check it out. It's like, it's called hi pro hierarchy or something like that, but it's pretty, it's pretty great. Um, look, someone says a few, oh, hey guy, a few important tips to mention for hierarchies. You can add a script to push out all your children out of a folder objects at runtime and make hierarchy editor folder object titles. Yeah, um, never that. that's okay, good. that's interesting. Um, I mean, trick. It's cool, but again, <laughs> like you're adding work that technically doesn't need to be done. I mean, if, if you're really pedantic about having a huge hierarchy of objects that you're worried about, I guess that's a good idea. Mm. Um, I just try to avoid it in general. Like for example, if they're if they're manager scripts or helpers, I don't mind if a hierarchy is nested. 10 deep in a very kind of small hierarchy, that's okay. The only times I'm worried about things being nested in the hierarchy is when they are, I call them actors. I, I define actors as things which have a presence in the game that will be moving around physically, that aren't going to be static, that aren't helpers mm. or manager classes. They're the ones you want to avoid dispatching unnecessary events for. Um, but things like manager classes and stuff to get higher, like, I will go really ham and have really neat folder structures of underscore logic for certain areas of the code or you know, managers under different services, all this kind of stuff. It's only the entities themselves, bullets, characters, enemies, whatever. Those ones I'll just pretty much dump into the um, into the hierarchy, or 
I will run a spawner, instantiate them, and pull them or something. Yeah. Cool. Listen.